It's time to look at the headlines across Nigerian newspapers this morning. Daily Trust is where we're starting from, and it says a coup attempt. Coup attempt is the focus here. ECOWAS sends mission to Niger Republic. And the residents protest as EU, France, AU condemn a military takeover. It's long time coming, diplomats are saying this, and the move can affect Nigeria's security architecture. Experts and security experts are trying to weigh in on this, you know, sharing their opinions on this. All right, Business Day is next, and he says, dying minutes for Tinubu's ministerial list today. Dying minutes for Tinubu's ministerial list today. That's what uh, Business Day has. And from there, let's go to the Nation newspaper. The Nation newspaper, Erufai Wike Oyetola Alake Fagbemi make ministers list. All right. And it says Edun Pate Adelabu Beta Edu. Beta Edu also nominated by president. All right. You see all that on the front page of the Nation newspaper. The Guardian is next. Tinubu toes familiar path as ministers may not resume till September. Okay. Tinubu toes familiar path as ministers may not resume till September. Because the argument there is, well, if, if the, there's a period of time, they all have to be screened, and that process has to complete before they resume office. So it is one thing to submit uh, the list of ministerial nominees. It's another thing to screen them. And recall that the Senate uh, National Assembly has, has been uh, talking about going on recess. So all these are the issues around it. Uh, Kemi. Right. Uh on the leadership now, and um, still on your, your point, Mike, it's suspense, according to the leadership, suspense as NASTAS National Assembly unveils committee chairpersons today. Apabio and Abbas, the, those are the leaders of the National Assembly from the Senate and the House of Representatives. Well, they have reportedly gotten lists uh, of uh, the ministers from the presidency. In the meantime, the speaker is said to be under pressure to defer committee announcement. And, uh, of course, there is a quote there uh, confirming that, indeed, the National Assembly has received President Tinubu's ministerial list. All of this on the leadership. On the blueprint now, it's uh, a spotlight, so to speak, on the controversies within the All Progressives Congress, the ruling party. Ganduje, the former uh, Kano State Governor is said to be inching closer to the APC's national uh, chairmanship position. Uh, a Northwestern uh, chairman, or the Northwest chairman, backing the former Kano Governor. And um, we also have this uh, quotation from uh, Lukman, uh, who says that I resigned from the National Working Committee to avoid. Uh, distractions to the president. Of course, this is the latest resignation, high-ranking resignation uh, from the ranks of the ruling All Progressives Congress, this time around uh, Alaji Lukman. On Nigerian News Direct, subsidy removal, labor outcry deepens as Nigeria Labor Congress plans another nationwide strike. Give me more time to address grievances, says President Tinubu, and federal government also goes on to uh, give reasons why we are yet to roll out palliatives. There's a court injunction in view as the federal government is said to be considering its next action with uh, this uh, looming uh, strike. And the uh, speaker Abbas to meet resident doctors and other stakeholders this Thursday. On the punch, President Tinobo is set to be pleading for more time as the Nigeria Labour Congress issues a strike notice. Of course, these are some of the issues that we have um, hinted on today. We'll get to talk some more uh, on this latest development uh, in, during the program. But that's the punch now leading with uh, the president asking uh, labor leaders for more time ahead of a planned strike due to commence next Wednesday. First News is still harping on this looming strike. First News says, Nigeria Labor Congress gives federal government a seven-day ultimatum as President Tinubu begs for more time. And finally, is this Nigeria on the sit-at-home 
uh, policy, so to speak, which uh, Southeastern governors are working to end. Well, the Senate has gone on to say that um, extradite ECPA from Finland now. Senate urges federal governments to extradite Simon ECPA from Finland. It goes on to say, that's this Nigeria, it goes on to say that the Senate has rejected a plea seeking the release of uh, IPOB leader Namdi Kanu. Task security agencies on use of technology to track criminals in the southeast zone. Those are the, the lead stories uh, ending with this Nigeria, Mike. All right. Let's look at this issue that Nigerians are already reacting to in a massive scale, and that's the issue of the um, planned strike by the organized labor. Mm -hmm. Now, they have given government ultimatum uh, to uh, uh, go on strike because they, in their argument that... Uh, Nigerians are feeling the brunt of the removal of subsidy. In fact, some of the people we've heard say, okay, let the prices of crude oil come down. But the point there is, uh, everyone has said that, uh, in fact, every Nigerian or most Nigerians had said that the subsidy should go. And if subsidy goes, everyone also knows the economic implication of it. The moment you remove subsidy, the prices of things are going to go up. And then all the other issues, that the attendant issues as regarding uh, how do we stabilize the price, how do we ensure there's availability, how do we allow Nigerians to cope with it, becomes the issue. Now, the, the, the recall that the president has set up, the presidency has set up, uh, you know, um, a committee, you know, to look into this issue of palliatives. What should it be and how much, who should it uh, impact and so on. So, how that is panning out now, uh, maybe it is not uh, moving in the pace that the NLC wants, and they're calling, giving government ultimatum for a strike. And uh, there's a meeting built to, uh, you know, also happen on Friday this week in continuation of, um, uh, of the talks. It's, it's, it's good that, um, you, know, you know, this is happening, so to speak, because, you know, Nigerians have been wondering you know, in that regard, as soon as this fuel subsidy, uh, the fuel subsidy re regime was, was uh, as soon as it ended, uh, so to speak, of course we saw uh, the labor groups, you know, springing up, you know, and the president, you know, also gave a listening air at the time. And there was a call uh, for an industrial action that was shelved. Talks, um, you know, happened, you know, between both sides in the hope that, you know, there would be you know, progress made and the Nigerians would, we're looking forward, you know, to the announcements, but of course, all these things have been going on in batches. Uh, go back to your side, go and report to your group and then come back to us. Mm -hmm. and, and now, uh, like you said, now it appears that things, the federal government may have to uh, work more speedily, uh, make all the things, the deliverables that the government had said it would bring. Uh, we hear in the papers, you know, that um, the issue of the CNG vehicles, mm. you know, were also in the works. The labor guys are talking about uh, an end or a reversal to the old to the old regime. We will wait and see how that will pan out. But but then the federal government, we understand, is also considering other options because this issue of the strike is before the court. And um, we hear again that the federal government might be considering you know, institution of contempt proceedings because the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation has come up with a statement saying that this call for strike is in, in, in disobedience of a valid subsisting court order which has, you know, disallowed the government, the labor groups from embarking on any strike. So that is, is interesting and, and we will really need to see how, you know, this will pan out if indeed the labor groups are uh, in in disobedience, but but then of course the facts speak for itself. If it if 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 w w I, I don't know what their reasons could be, because both sides have since gone on to court and have submitted themselves to the jurisdiction mm. of the court. So coming out now amidst the talks, because there was you know a latest discussion between both sides, and we hear that they are still coming back again on Friday. So uh, we don't know where this is going, but of course it's not the first time that a threat to embark on strike would, would come from the labor groups. And of course, 
we know how this is the familiar path that we've all we've all walked on on we are hoping for for better days you know yeah. despite all this we, we hope for better days of course the the organized labor will stand on the side of the, of the people, people saying well the reality of the removal of subsidy and the unification of the exchange rate and all of that has taken a toll on Nigerians, especially the, the really poor ones. And, of course, you don't expect the labor unions to sit down and, you know, just fold their arms and watch government as much as they understand what the government is doing. But they want government to speed up, especially you talked about the issue of the palliatives. Now, the palliatives... Uh, the CNG vehicles, the minimum wage, the cash conditional salaries, cash transfers right, and salaries, place. you know, all of those things are issues that NLC or the organized labor expect government to work on immediately. Recall that the president has said, well, we need to review that 8,000. Who, who are you giving the 8,000? Who, the point there is, how far, or, you know, how far would it go for a family of two, three, four, five? or even six, or more than that. Who will have what and who will not have what? The governor of Nasarawa State had said, well, to be frank, the 8,000 means a lot to some people. Yeah, it means a lot to some people. That's true. But the point there is, if we are going to really look at how to ameliorate the sufferings of Nigerians, we're talking about 8,000 for a month. Whoever the issue, whoever, however poor the person is, and how much, however way the money means a lot to it, to some people, what will eight thousand do for a family in a month? Is one thing, and it was good uh, when the president said, "Well, we need to review this so that maybe the the want to see how they can uh, come up with a more robust strategy as to reaching Nigerians." And they're uh, making it clear. Another issue that uh, Nigerians had talked about is the issue of transparency and communication. Recall that we've talked about this before, and uh, the, the 12 million families that will be impacted or that will be benefiting from the palliatives or from the 8,000 as, as it is, there has to be a publication of those persons so Nigerians can really know, okay, these are the people who benefited from this, this is where they reside, this is who they are, and, and so on, so that th there is some level of trust between the people mm. and the government. Well, all these are valid points, uh, Mike, and one would also, you know, consider the other latest happenings of, um, you know, the intervention of the government, of the state governments. You know, now we are seeing uh, state governments also showing their assertiveness in, in the issue. And, you know, they made a case last week, yes. uh, which we, we followed, about, uh, you know, this issue of, you know, a register for welfare and, and all that, this has to be done, you know, considering state's peculiarities. And so it cannot be, you know, inaugurated, it cannot be implemented, so to speak, you know, at the federal level. But eventually, who are these people? It still comes down to our respective domains. And so let us take ownership of, of this project. Mm -hmm. So this, this obviously would be another consideration. Uh, but of course, you know, time is of the essence. It's, it's two months now, you know, since this fuel subsidy removal, uh, you know, took effect. And um, we are all mindful of the varying impact. Everyone is feeling the brunt uh, somewhat and everybody is looking for, uh, you're looking for interventions, mm -hmm. you know, so to speak, meaningful interventions. And with the president suspending, you know, that's 8,000, um, you know, for, for family, not all families, by the way, but the president, you know, suspending that. People are running with that, that, okay, something better is, is in the offing for them. But of course, as has been stressed, you know, speed is of the essence. Exactly. Well, uh, to, to also put it there, everyone needs help one way or the other. Everyone needs palliatives. Uh, some, may need, some may need it more than others, but I think everyone in Nigeria uh, certainly needs some level of assistance. Even the richest man in Africa, who is a Nigerian, uh, needs help somehow, one way or the other. Right. Okay. Now, let's um, leave you here now. Uh, we will discuss uh, the topics as we get along now. But